for Shake, Rattle, and Troll, a show for the serious fishermen, as well as the novice looking for tips from the pros. Shake, Rattle, and Troll is brought to you by Bill Luke Dodge Chrysler Jeep. Now, here's your host, saltwater fisherman and tournament pro, Don McDowell. Yeah, man. Hey, I'm Don McDowell. Welcome to the Sunday edition of Shake, Rattle, and Troll. We have a Sunday edition because that's the only one we, that we do. So, Wow. All righty. Let's see. Uh, I guess Halloween's coming up, and J.K. is uh, dressed up like a deer hunter up in uh, Unit 3C uh, on some big buck, from what I understand. And uh, we're going to do quite a bit of stuff today. Our, our special guest today, uh, John Sneed, owner-operator of uh, All-Star Bass Fishing Tournaments. Thanks for coming over. Long drive, but glad you could make it. Yeah, thanks for having me and Don. I enjoy it. Yeah, we've got a lot of stuff uh, going on in the... Uh, uh, tournament circuits uh, of late. Uh, we're going to cover some of the things going on uh, relative to the closure and the government taking a couple of weeks off and uh, getting things back going. Uh, Mac Patrick was out with uh, Flathead Ed fishing on Lake Pleasant. Uh, that was awesome. That was awesome. Really? That was great. I have to ask, what did he use for bait? Was it Oscar Meyer or... <laughs> Actually, we, we started out on Friday afternoon, uh, about 1 o'clock, and we had to go catch bait, Flathead Ed and I. And we get all rigged up, and we're ready to go. First thing I do is I throw my pole in the water. and It's a rod. I throw the, exactly. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, I, let, I, I let, throw let, the bait in there, and I catch a bass. John, you're going to have, have to help me out with this. Okay, <laughs> bass anglers use a fishing rod. Correct. Okay, catfishing guys use a fishing pole. Pole, exactly. Right, I, I got that. All right. First thing I pull out of the water is a damn bass. I can't help it. What's such disrespect? I can't help it. First, and then damn I, bass. It was a we were catching they call bluegill. Large mouth bass. It was a large mouth bass. Hold on a minute. How big was it? It was huge, John. <laughs> Absolutely huge. Damn yeah. bass. Yeah, damn <laughs> bass. Yeah, probably an eight pounder, John. I'm yeah, thinking. probably. Yeah. Huh? Had yeah. to turn it loose. Yeah, yeah. I turned an eight loose. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we caught a bunch of bluegill and use that for bait. Damn bluegill. Damn bluegill. Yeah, all right. I got it. <laughs> Through the stripers back that we caught. I see where this is headed. Yep. It was awesome. It was great. Yeah, he's going to have handlebars, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Looks like a so, Harley, Harley with a t- Tell us a catfish story. We've heard all about the damn bass and the damn bluegill. It, it was a blast. I mean, you, you pull up on a boat, and he has a swivel reclining rocker chair covered in camouflage. Nice. Come on. It was great. Nice. And, and we it, have butt seats. And we, yeah. If we're lucky. That we can lean against, maybe. He actually had an extension on the handle, so you didn't have to reach down too far to pull the the front end of the rocker Now, up. do you have pictures to substantiate all this? I have pictures that you wouldn't believe. Nice. Some of them I have been told I can't show. Those are the ones we'll post on the website. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are the ones that we want to see for sure. Well, we're going to have to uh, get Ed back down here and welcome him onto the uh, Daiichi Pro, uh, Hooks Pro Staff uh, out of Wetumpka, Alabama. So I yeah. think he's going to represent him well. So what was the big fish? Um, by the time we got back to the by dock. The, but no, 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 no. By the scales at the time that it was pulled Catfish in. don't have scales, Don. Whoa, good one. That was a good one. Man. He got you. Yeah, but they got whiskers. I get it. All big right. whiskers. Yeah, there were some big whiskers on there. We didn't catch as big as we wanted to, but Tim Andrews and his son, Big Jake, they caught two fish. But we still don't know how big they were. I'm, I'm still waiting. What was the total of the two fish? The total weight? Total weight, yeah. Um, It started out at about 16 pounds. By the time we got back to the dock, they were 40 pounds apiece. There you go. So I take it he also <clears throat> serves beverages on this boat. Uh, you have to bring your own. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's water. And yeah, it's too. like Pleasant BYOB. <laughs> bring, bring your own bass. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, boy. Yeah, you'll see the judge for that one. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is actually yeah. a good setup. You don't have to bring anything except for snacks, and Catfish Ed just got them all. Everything is hooked up. You don't need anything. Well, how how big is the boat? What kind of boat is it? It's a pontoon boat, uh, probably 25 foot, 20, 20 foot. Barbecue grill? 
didn't have that option, but the option is available. Hammock. Cots. Not cots. <laughs> yeah. Not He's got <laughs> cots. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee pot. Lou. Yeah. yeah we, everything. Yeah. Yeah. We sleep in the rod locker. You know. Yeah. No, it was absolutely a, a blast. The only thing that I wish I would have taken was a notepad. There were so many little jewels going around with all of us. It was, it was just great. Man. Awesome. Sorry I missed it. I don't think you're wired for it, Donnie. I don't think that boat's big enough for you to get up and walk around back and forth, and you'd, you'd have been scaring the fish. That's why we have sedatives in a bottle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take as needed. All righty. Uh, l- let me give you an update on what's going on on the Wolf uh, front. Uh, there's been an assault on Sherry Barrett at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in downtown Albuquerque. Is she okay? Uh, yeah, they're up to their old shenanigans again. Uh, we've asked for a meeting in Payson. Uh, Payson is, uh, quite frankly, about the hub of the uh, newly proposed uh experimental area or uh, wolf habitat area anyway what they've decided to do because the uh, of the federal shutdown the uh, first public meeting will take place uh, November 19th in Denver Colorado I can more or less understand that one uh, November 20th in Albuquerque tracking on uh, why they need to meet in Albuquerque now the one that I can't track on and uh, there's going to be a phone call maybe even a uh, personal visit on this one november 22nd downtown sacramento california and i'm not i'm not getting that at all other than the fact that you know the uh anti or the the pro wolfers let's say uh, cbd and uh dow and 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 the rest of them uh are probably pushing for that uh there i know there is a uh headquarters uh, office over there for some of these folks and why they they want to have a meeting in uh, California? Yeah, and my thought, John, is if, if California want wolf, give them to them. Give them to them. Let yeah. them have them all. Yeah, they you know they've outlawed and banned every other damn thing on the planet. So you know we call it the left coast for a reason. Anyway, that's November twenty second, and they have uh, magnanimously uh, decided to have a meeting December third in Pine Top at the uh, Honda conference center on uh, highway 260 that meeting uh, will kick off at uh, 3 30 to 5 p.m which is uh, their public uh, information meeting and then uh, they'll be taking uh, public comments uh, for the record uh, from 6 to 8 30 p.m so if you have an interest i would highly recommend this is our last shot uh, t- to get our point across I'm not sure that they're going to get it, but uh, it'll be good to be there and uh, in force to uh, say what you have to say about the wolf issue. And, uh, what date is that? Uh, December, de- December 3rd. And that's yeah. at the Pine Top? Yep. Yeah. Up in Pine Top. You know, and why, you know, I, there's an awful lot of uh, extraneous pressure being put on them. There's an awful lot of livestock growers up there. Apache County's passed... Uh, their own ordinance to deal with predators and experimental predators, uh, they, they'll manage them. <clears throat> and I don't believe that's catching the wolves and uh, putting them in the bad, bad, uh, bad hotel. There are a couple of wolves being captured, uh, being um, darted and uh, by helicopters. Uh, they've been found guilty of livestock predation and. Uh, male and the female and they're going to put them in a ba- uh, bad wolf hotel so they can make the rest of their life and don't have to have you know chase their dinner around the field so yeah which they were made, i, I, made I, I don't do, quite get so, that yeah, you know yeah. if you and i were bad and they put us a place where they're going to give us three squares and let us breed all we want to <laughs> where do you sign up for bad yeah <laughs> yeah so that, that, that's basically where this is all going so uh, I'm not in favor of that. If you're found guilty, bam, put a bullet in your head and get it over with. There you go. Having said that, we will move on. Um, thanks for coming down. Uh, you've got an awful lot of stuff going on with uh, all-star bass fishing. Um, uh, before we go into the break, uh, John, how did you get started in bass fishing? I've never heard that particular story. Oh, man. Well, 
believe it or not, it goes back to grandpa and dad, you know. Always uh, does. Yeah, and uh, when I was very young, I, the first trip I, I really remember uh, going bass fishing was with my dad and my grandpa. We went over to the Imperial Valley. We lived in San Diego. I grew up in San Diego. Nice. And uh, we went over there, and I was three years old. And I don't know why I remember that trip, but I remember that trip. There was lots of them after that that I don't remember, <laughs> you know, because I was so young. But I remember that trip. We were in a 56 Ford pickup truck, and the three of us. And I, I think the reason I remember is because my grandpa said something to the effect. He says, this is really something to have three generations going fishing. Oh, man. You know, and that's yeah. how it all started for me, and it's been all downhill, uphill, sideways from there. You know, it's it's my passion. It's what I love. Nice, nice. Uh, when you came to Arizona, uh, Tom Stiles and, and Harry uh, had the organization in the magazine, and you came in, opened up a tackle shop, and you know took over uh, All Star, and really have turned it around. Uh, what, what was your main focus uh, coming to Arizona? You know, to be honest with you, Don. And, and what year was that? Uh, we. It was 08 when we moved over to here. Do you hear the wind blowing? I do. Okay. Yeah. I'm just checking. It was 08 when we moved over to here and bought All Star. And to be honest with you, I was out of the tournament directing business. I had quit the year before. I had a really successful region over at Havasu in the lower Colorado River with a different organization. And I just had enough. I wanted to go fishing again. You can't be a tournament director and fish. You no. just, You just can't do it. So I turned over that region to a, a friend of mine at the time and uh, just set him up with a going concern, and I got out of it. Well, another friend of mine. All right, hold that thought. We've got to thank some of our sponsors, including Bill and Chrysler, Jeep and Dodge. I'm Don McDowell here with John Sneed and Matt Catfish over here. Matt Arr, Catfish. Yar, matey. We'll be right back. All righty, we're back uh, with John Sneed, Arizona, 2008. Yeah, we uh, Janet and I moved over here, and uh, we bought All Star from Tom, and we were gonna head a different direction than we ended up heading, and uh, we got pointed in a little bit different direction than we originally started, and it's worked out real well for us. Um, you know, we've got we're we're drawing a good amount of teams. 99.9% of the anglers we have are great to have, you know, and we couldn't have done it without the people that are behind oh, us. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, it's the people behind us that make All-Star. Um, you know, as you well know, Bill Luke Dodge just came on board with us and, and in, in a big way. And Skeeter Boats, Yamaha Motors, you know, all these folks and my my staff. I mean, I got a staff that is second to none. They are so dedicated to us. Um, you know, and that's really what makes All Star. Well, let's let's name names uh, on on your staff. Who's uh, working with you? Well, we have Jerry Kirkpatrick, which yeah, I don't know why he came into my life, but you know, I just love having that man around me. Cool. He's the guy that uh, pretty much designed and built our release tanks and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I definitely want to talk about that at some point. Yeah, and then we have actually the whole Nugent family. Currently, we have Mike Nugent and Cody Nugent, you know, staffing with us. Um, Debbie Nugent is there any time that we need her. Um, George, little George. Little George is so awesome. He's the best hot dog <laughs> cook in the world. Yeah, man. man. And he just does, everybody just does what needs to be done. It's just effortless. What would a bass fishing tournament be without a hot dog at the end? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know? Exactly. Yeah, we were talking to uh, the Oscar Meyer Wienermobile people trying to get him out here for uh, bass days last year, and uh, they were stunned. Yeah. You know, we went through the demographics, and let's just say if you took all of the uh, tournaments in Arizona, added up the anglers, put 1.23 hot dogs per angler, it's yes. a lot of damn hot dogs. Yes, it is. I'm telling you. Yes, it is. I have no idea on a hot dog count what we go through, but we average a couple hundred dollars a tournament in oh, hot dogs and buns. Can you imagine what would happen with, with a golf tournament if you got a hot dog at the end? Uh, <laughs> instead of the beer? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that, that's all good. Uh, let's go down the list of your sponsorship, and uh, thank you for uh, recognizing Bill at Chrysler Jeep and Dodge Ram, uh, Fiat, and uh, all the other stuff that they do. And, uh, you know, Kim Carter's, uh, he's a heck of a bass fisherman. I fished uh, a couple of seasons with Kim, and uh, you know what? Every day was just an adventure. We had a blast. Yeah, for the the brief time that I've known Kim, you know, I've known of Kim naturally for a long time because of his uh, association and and his support of the bass fishing tournaments. But he's just an awesome kind of guy. You know, I, I would love to get out in a boat with him for the day. Don't let him drive. He's an old dirt track racer. Well, yeah, I'd have to yeah. get behind the wheel. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> you know, and, and a lot of that goes to uh, Don Luke. Uh, they're very successful uh, since 1927 uh, doing what they do do. Uh, the new dealership, uh, over there is the, uh, one of the, uh, not one of the largest, uh, five star dealership in the Southwest. And, uh, Don, uh, truly does do a lot, uh, putting back into the community, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all the different things that they do. And, uh, you know, I feel blessed to, uh, have that relationship with, uh, all the folks over there. Uh, who are some of your others? And I specifically want to talk about the, the fuel additive, uh, Who's that? That in, is uh, that's Biobor. They're Biobor. Uh, yeah, okay. they're based out of Texas, and uh, they came on board with us when we signed up with Army Bass Anglers, which is a fantastic organization. And uh, Biobor and them, it was a, a package deal. And Biobor, the product, um, it's just starting to take off out here in the West. You know, but it's an awesome product. I mean, I believe I gave you some for your diesel at one point. Yes, you did. And, uh, and I, you know, got a pretty good personal testimony on it. Uh, you know, I had had been using uh, the uh, Lucas Fuel Additive. Um, but this seems to uh, do all that uh, the other stuff does and more. And uh, what I found curious, uh, I've got a can of whoop-ass on my, uh, on my truck. It's a, a Predator 2. Uh, computer enhancement, and then it's got a tuning console, and it's got three different settings, and I keep it up on extreme, uh, high horsepower. But the only problem with it, it smokes. Uh-huh. It smokes like two Bluebird school buses. Uh-huh. But uh, this seemed to reduce my I, – I, I would go on a limb and say probably reduce my smoke uh, output by at least half. Yeah, that's the, the Biobor <clears throat> MD, which is the diesel treatment. I noticed that. Now, I drive a Chevy truck with a Duramax in it, which they don't have the smoking issues like the Dodges and the Fords. And that's why KFNX has a handicap parking right right over here. I don't know if you noticed, but that's where I did park today. Thank you. Okay. So. okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but, no, the, the BioBoard, now, back to their EB, the ethanol buster, which everybody should be running in their bass boats, any kind of boat, pontoon boat. I don't care what it is. Anybody that's seen what happens to the inside of the fuel line due to the ethanol that's in our fuels now needs to run this biobore because it eliminates that. Okay, are you are you familiar with Ring Free? I am. Okay, does it do the same as Ring Free does? It uh, it, it does most of what Ring Free does plus. And then, so, okay. You know, what it does is it combats all the ethanol in the fuel to save the fuel line, stuff like that. It does clean the... The carbon and whatnot like that, you know. It, and anything, anytime you're going to park anything, you should have uh, BioBore EB in it. Really? Yeah. As opposed to Stabil. Uh, yeah. In so, my opinion, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, like my lawnmower and chainsaw and weed blower, all those things that I park permanently, I put BioBore. That's in. exactly why I bought a bass boat. Yeah, it's exactly. The park, exactly. The weed eater, the lawnmower. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, hedge trimmer. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 My my big deal was uh, rip out the front yard, put in uh, about 70 tons of decomposed granite. Done. Yeah. Well, when we moved into the house, we have a tonneau basin now. We uh, we put that whole package together up there. And Jan, my wife, says. She goes, I want to plant grass. And I says, well, honey, I said, that's fine. I said, she goes, well, the dogs need a place to play. And I said, well, that's fine. I said, just don't plant more than you can mow. <laughs> and a boy. Hoorah. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of desert landscape over there in Tunnel Basin. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> how, how was the snake situation this year? You know what? I killed about a four-and-a-half footer right next to my boat about two months ago. 
which made me unhappy. But the almost five years we've been there, it's the first one I've seen on the property. You were unhappy? Think how the snake felt. Well, he got a, a 20 gauge upside the head. Nice. So. That's a big snake. You know what? I've been all over this, uh, all over the Southwest and in, in some of the largest rattlesnakes I've ever seen are on the other side of the river. Yes. Cross over there on that plateau. Yes. Man. Now we have, uh, I say, I speak we, my, my quail hunting buddy, Jimmy Ridge, and I have this friend that he's the lake manager, Big Bear Lake manager over there in California. And he comes over and goes deer hunting every year. Now, you know that I live right at the bottom of Picture Mountain. So running up on top of the hill is no big deal. We do it quite regular. Well, I've been up there going up there for a little over five years now on a real regular basis, and I have yet to see a snake. Really? Well, our friend Mike that comes over, he's been up there twice and killed a snake both times. So I don't go with him anymore. Yeah. Wow. Well, we have, uh, you know, a list of rules to live by, and I think it's rule 14 if it doesn't have uh, shoulders or an eyebrow. So, pow. Exactly right. That's right. Yeah. That, that covers a multitude of things. Um, we're going to uh, step down and uh, take a little bit of uh, more of a break and uh, thank some more of our sponsors. Uh, top of the hour, we're going to be talking to Sean Dale over at Fast Tracks. They've got an open house uh, and an invitation going out to everybody. We'll try to get a hold of Rick over at the uh, H&M Tackle Shop Landing, see what's happening over on the uh, saltwater side of life. And then more with John Sneed. I'll be back. Though most people think of them poorly, Orange and sidewinders make me go weak at the knees. All righty, then I guess we're snakes, back. Black snakes uh, and brown snakes John, we're snakes uh, uh, talking about uh, sponsors for all star uh, uh, bass tournaments. Uh, wh- where's this uh, bio stuff? What is it? Biobore. Biobor. I'm going I'm to get that down. Uh, wh- where is it available locally? Um, there's several people that have it. Is far, I believe the only place that it's available to walk in and buy it over the counter is like West Marine. And that's the only place I know of for sure. Naturally, I have it. Tom Inman has it. Um, there's several of the Army Bass Angler guys that have it. So anytime, and we're working on getting it into stores around here. Nice. So that, that's certainly on the agenda. Okay. Uh, who else is uh, supporting the organization this year? Well, we have, uh, obviously, Skeeter Boats and Yamaha Motors. What a, a fantastic group of people. They have taken such good care of us over the years. We have Complete Marine. They've been with us uh, for probably the last four or five years. Uh, Dobbins Rods came on this year. Um, you know, we're really, really happy to have Dobbins Rods on. Jim Guggenauer, Rim Country Custom Rods, he's always, always been there for us. Great guy, fantastic product. We have DJ Custom Jigs out of Las Vegas, um, first year with us. Fantastic jigs. If you're a jig fisherman, you, need, you owe it to yourself to check out a DJ Custom Jig. Um, naturally, A&M Graphics. Andrew has been just been so awesome. He you you got to love Andrew, buddy. Yeah. He uh, he just wrapped our fifth wheel trailer for us. And Is he just, still cutting his own hair? You know what? I don't know, but to look at it, I'd have to say. Probably. I'm just asking. <laughs> no, I don't know. Sorry, Andrew, if you're listening. you got to love it. <laughs> but, yeah, Andrew, Edie over there at A&M Graphics, they are just fantastic people taking <laughs> such good care of us. Um, Fisherman's Hideaway, little RV park up there in Tonto Basin, RV park storage, covered storage, open storage, full hookups. Um, and Army Bass Anglers. What a great, you know, they're Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marine bass anglers, and just a fantastic group of people involved in a lot of things for the troops. Have you met uh, Major Cody? Yes, I did. I met him at the meeting that we went to the other day. Cool. How's his health in general terms? Um, okay, good. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, and uh, you know that's about it this year. Oh, we have Boston's Market up there. Have you ever ate at Boston's up there at the lake? I have. I, I had the the uh, mispleasure of uh, dining there with uh, Donnie McBride. Nice. Yeah. How did that go? Let's just say that there were no zip ties in, involved, but it was close. <laughs> yeah, um, Boston, the owner of Boston's, he came on board with us this year. He catered our championship 
and uh, came on board with us as a, as a regular sponsor. And fantastic food. If you're ever up in that area, stop in there and and say hi and uh, have a cold drink and a and a pulled pork sandwich or something. It's really good. Yeah, good stuff up there. Uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting uh, little place up there. Definitely. Uh, uh, what what's the uh, economic uh, outlook? Uh, for the tunnel basin area during this little shutdown, uh, how big of a hurt was that to the uh, pretty major local guys? Pretty major. I mean, you know, I'm uh, uh, good friends with the owner of the tackle box now, Frank Powell, and uh, it, it hurt him. I mean, this typically the summertime is a tough time up there anyway. Yes, it is. You know, but this little added deal that the feds did to us really put the hurt on the market. You know, on the butcher hook, on the the local tackle stores. I mean, it just wasn't a good thing. Just was not good at all. Uh, how did you find the uh, basic inconvenience? Uh, you know, we're we're in the process of scheduling some uh, meetings with Tonto National Forest on uh, their behavior. Uh, some of the things that uh, they can't do. Some of the things that they they have been doing. You know, we we try to recognize folks that do do a good job and and uh sometimes uh they don't do a very good job and uh, they need to be taken to task for that but uh, overall the uh, recent uh, change in, in in the venues uh cave creek had a per, uh permitting process roosevelt had their own which was different and now we've got this little nightmare that uh the tds have about a week out of in the last week of September to get all their dates in. They give you, and you have to make a phone call for everyone. They give you a phone call back. You may or may not get the date. How in the world can you schedule a bass fishing season with those kind of restraints? Well, th- this is a, a kind of a difficult question for me to answer. We, I, I, I'm, I'm, I really don't want to put you on the spot, so. Thank you. If, if you want to sidestep <laughs> this. No, actually, you know, we feel, the pain that we feel more than anything is the Tano National Forest, now we're talking Tano, has always worked real well with us. We got word the other day from the gal that actually does the permitting that this new rule that they came out with is not etched in stone that they will work with us. You will be able to carry on business as usual. Um, now, if we could get Cave Creek to work with us the way Tano does, that would be so awesome because Tano bends over backwards for All Star well, and that, the other directors. Well, that's good to hear, and and we're gonna uh, definitely uh, invite you along. You know, the, <laughs> here's my take on it. If you can't, yeah. And I don't care who you are, whether you're uh, assigned to the federal government, the state government, private sector, uh, you know, even in your home, your own home. If you have an assigned task just because of the venue and you can't perform that task, you need to be relieved of that particular task and turn it over to somebody else, especially when you're dealing with public property. Roosevelt, all the national forest, and, uh, you know, if somebody gets offended, just go out and put a bullet in your head because I really don't give a damn anymore. That's public pro- – that, that's our property. Correct. You know, I agree. It, it, and uh, the closures with the uh, the dump stations, the fish cleaning uh, stations, the camping ramadas, the launch ramps, and the this and the that, uh, you know what? It's time just to take take the property back and say, okay – we're going to give you X amount of dollars. This is your job. And if you don't want to go do that job, you're fired. Yeah, we'll find you, somebody you, that will you go do to the payroll. job. Yeah. I mean, welcome to real war. Yeah, exactly. You know, the things that we notice, I mean, when I still own the tackle box up there, we'd hear a lot about when the winter visitors would come into town, we'd hear about the uh, fish cleaning stations being closed and stuff like that. And to me, it's, it's just asinine to have them closed. There's got to be somebody that can maintain them. You know, the one that I notice more than anything is the dump station. When yeah. the dump station's closed, when you leave Tonto Basin headed back out towards 87 to either go north or go south, you can see where people are dumping. Exactly. You know, and that just ain't right. Take the cap off, get up on the gas. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love these, these high level discussions. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But I mean, those are the things that we noticed the most. When the launch ramps closed, we were notified by Tano National Forest. They had already called the marina and arranged with the marina for us to have our tournament out of the marina. You know, we were scrambling because we didn't know what to do. And then all of a sudden, one day, the phone rang, and it was Sharon. And she says, hey, you guys are set up to go out of the marina. We want, we did not, you know, want to throw you in too big of a tailspin here. Yeah. You know, so they have always worked really, really well with us and the other directors. I know that, you know, they work with everybody. We're not special. You know, but they do do that. And I, that's why I say this is a hard thing because I see – the fish station, the fish cleaning stations are closed. I hear people complain about that. When the the dump site is closed, I see that with my own two eyes when I drive to the valley or to Payson. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just wish they'd get it together and get that type of stuff fixed. Well, you know, my heartburn comes uh, when, when they take the, take the money. And if you start looking at budgets and you go back a ways and, and look at the money that was spent on all of these facilities that we're talking about, and some things that we haven't talked about were the – the man pay stations. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of money. Yeah. It's a lot of money. They close it. Well, we don't have the personnel. Then why in the hell did you build them? Exactly. Okay. And then because they didn't have the people in the pay station wasn't open, they put in automatic pay stations. So you could go get your ticket or not. Um, they don't take $20 bills, by the way. Yeah, I know. Sure they a do. a lot of issues. And then, they uh, take 20s, 50s, 100s. They just well, don't, you don't give you any change. change. Yeah, they don't, yeah thank yeah. you. They'll take anything. So then that didn't work out for whatever reason. Now we have to go to the Circle K or someplace to get our uh, tunnel pass. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got a, I've got a huge problem with, with all the money that they spend. I mean, it's like... Who's actually driving the boat? You got a lot, uh, a lot of good people, you know, Kelly and, and Sharon and, and just a lot of good people over here. But, you know, if it's coming down from above, we need to take their audit or, uh, their budget and do a forensic audit and say, okay, you guys just, you know, shut everything down and put pressure on the public. So we'd scream and cry and, and complain like we do over closures. Let's take a look at your budget. Let's see, are you are you top heavy on management? Do you, you not have the people in the field? Blah 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 blah. Let's see what that ratio is, and maybe some of the supervisors need to go out and clean the damn fish cleaning stations. I, I'm just saying, <laughs> it's part of your job. Go, to, you know, I, I don't have the luxury of going. You know, that's over my pay grade. My pay grade is go out and get it done. Exactly. You yeah. and me both yeah, work and, for and the and same if, guy. If then. I don't do that, I get fired. Exactly. Welcome to reality. Having said that, I'm going to get off my soapbox. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, roll call and some other things. I'm Don McDowell with. Who are you? John Sneed. Yeah, Sorry. him too. Me yeah, and Pat high fiving over start, here. Starting start to rub off. And, uh, <laughs> wow. We'll be back. Here they come again. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody Catch sing. If you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that part. <laughs> All right. Who sings that? Yeah. Uh, uh, me? <laughs> Let them sing it, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, appreciate that, big boy. All right. Uh, how many uh, different uh, events do you have? I know you've got the, uh, the the team tournament, and I was trying to get J.K. to dress up in a nightgown so we could, we could fish the couples, but uh, he's resisting. Well, we do the... Uh Obviously, the team tournaments. We have the couples and kids, which we're still, even though uh, Game and Fish threw us a little curveball on the age for a license, we still hold it at, if you're younger than 14, you can fish with an adult, parent, grandparent, whatever, and fish the kids division. And then we still have the aluminum boat division, the best. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, we still have that. I mean, it's, uh, it's struggling, to say the least. I mean... You know, that whole core group of anglers, I think, were mainly the construction guys and stuff, the guys that got hit the hardest by this. You know, this. I fished that a couple of uh, couple of years for um, Tracker, and I have to tell you, I had such a blast with those guys because back at, at that particular time, there were a lot of older guys, let's yes. say. Yes, yes. And they didn't care about racing boats. Nope. They didn't care about anything but... Let's just catch a fish. Yep, that's it. Let's just go out, have fun. You know, and I still had my knucklehead uh, attitude with we had a uh, a Pro 180, and, and 
hung a motor on that that was way too big for that <laughs> aluminum boat. <laughs> Been there. There was nobody to race. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, the, and the worst part is nobody cared. That they don't. Nobody cared they but go, you. Yeah, look you at know. that knucklehead. Yeah, so... But we still have that, and, and I would love to see that come back for that very reason. Me too, you know? absolutely. As a matter of fact, we had an angler call Jan the other day after our Pleasant tournament, and uh, he said that he had not seen the camaraderie and the people hanging around after the weigh-in for a long, long time like he saw at Pleasant. Nice. You know, and that, to me... To me, now that I don't really fish very much, that's what the tournament's all about, is hanging out with people, meeting new people, making friends, and just having a good old time. You know, that that's what it should be uh, when uh, Randy McElrath uh, started with NBC. All the stuff, and, and, you know, that, that was before uh, your intervention and, and the all-star tournament. There were so many little clicks yes. that the Ranger Boat guys, if you didn't – drive a range boat they didn't want to talk to you if you didn't do this or part your hair on the left side or whatever it just wasn't fun yeah i mean you'd boil your fish and go there wasn't anything yep. you'd, you'd hang out and talk to your your couple buddies and off you go but that but that whole thing started turning around and uh it kind of went away but i see it coming back again well and, and that's what what janet and i strive for because that's what we want we want to be known I mean, obviously, we want to be the biggest, baddest tournament circuit out there. Right. I mean, if I didn't have that kind of desire and that kind of drive, why do it? Exactly. You know, but I want to see the people hang around. I mean, we have a group, a core group of anglers that consist of probably 50 to 55 boats that no matter where we go, they're there. You know, they. if I show up to the lake and I'm a little bit late, you, you've seen the equipment that we roll to the lake. It takes mm-hmm, four trucks mm-hmm. to get my stuff to the lake. And if I roll in a little bit late, I mean, they're right there setting up tables and chairs. And it's just, you know, it's what I want to see in the tournament thing. You know, it's just what I like. Let me ask you about this uh, United Food Bank Bass Tournament uh, that you guys are conducting on uh, November 23rd, right before uh, the holiday season. Uh, give me a rundown on how that's going to come out. Well, uh, we were approached by Gary Thompson, one of our, our regular anglers, and uh, he asked would we help him out in doing this fundraising tournament for the United Food Bank. And we said absolutely. I mean, All-Star is always willing to, to jump in for a good cause. And, uh, you know, once he found out that we were willing to, to basically just do the tournament end of it, set up, run the tournament, do the weigh-in, he's taking care of everything else, but it's a, it's the... Fishing to End Hunger in AZ, and what they're going to do is they're going to take half the the monies collected for this, and they're going to feed people throughout the holidays. And uh, last year, they did a deal like this. It wasn't with a fishing tournament, but they they got over 22 million pounds of food. Wow. 22 million pounds. That's more than I weigh. <laughs> Not by much, but by a little bit. Yeah, boy. You know, and so they're going to do that. It, we're going to do it in conjunction with one of our couples tournaments because we were already permitted. This was back when the permit thing was, you know, up in the air. So we're going to do it in conjunction with one of our couples tournaments at Roosevelt on the 23rd out of Windy Hill. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to see if I can find a partner and fish it. Nice. That's, uh, those are some pretty big uh, statistics, 22 million pounds of food. Man. Well, okay. the thing is, they've got 260 partner agencies, you know, in five counties in, in Arizona here to take care of this stuff. And I think it's just an awesome cause. We'll get that posted up on the website for you. What's the uh, tournament ent- entry fee for this particular uh, charity event? You know, I believe it's $200. Okay. Oh, hold on. I was just informed I have the entry right here in my hand. Yeah. Basic entry, $200 with a $50 big bass. Nice. You know, um, and then there's a $100 red, white, and blue and a top five option for $50. All options will be paid back 100%. And I believe that Gary's got it set up to pay $100 on every entry and then $100 goes to the food bank. Yeah. Good. So. Good. Uh, what are your tournament fees, your basic uh, uh, fees for the uh, team? 
tournament. The, the basic entry for the teams is $165, and then we have uh, a lot of options you can get in. I mean, you can spend a little over 500 bucks if you want to. Nice. But our basic yeah. entry is 165 Yeah, what's your big fish option? That, that That's always a huge one. It's uh the big fish option is thirty dollars, um, and then we have our maxi tees and mini tees. We didn't really change a lot from the way Tom had it set up. We yeah, you did. I don't have to beach my boat <laughs> well, to, to go to weigh in. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, we did change that quite a lot. Yeah, thank so. you very much. <laughs> oh man. Um, but as far as the options and stuff go, you know, every once in a while, Jan and I will do a little survey thing. She'll print up some half pages of stuff, and we'll hand them out to the anglers and ask them. What do you want us to change? You cool. know, if, if you could change anything, what would it be? And I'd say 80% of them, we get back, it ain't broke, don't fix it. Thank you. So. Good stuff. Yeah, we just go on with it the way it is. All righty. Uh, before we get going with roll call, we'll give you a little update on uh, Seth Wakeling. Uh, you'll know Seth. Uh, he's the, uh, Brian Wakeling's son is our uh, uh, Brian's our big game chief out at uh, Arizona Game and Fish Department. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Seth stepped on an IED, lost his left uh, foot, and he's at uh, at the uh, care center. And apparently, uh, a week and a half ago, they had to do another amputation uh, up a little further, still still below the knee, but uh, had some infection there. But he's doing uh, doing rather well, and I understand uh, Brian's going to be. Uh, back uh mrs wick is going to stay there and with uh seth for a while but uh today we're going to get going with roll call we have uh two soldiers to uh recognize today the uh, first one sergeant lyle d turnbull died october 18th serving during operation enduring freedom 31 years old out of north fork virginia uh the sergeant was assigned to the 62nd expedary Expeditionary Signal Battalion, 11th uh, Signal Brigade out of Fort Hood, Texas, uh, and that happens to be a heavy artillery uh, uh, base as well. Uh, he died October 18th after he collapsed following a workout at Camp Everjohn in uh, Kuwait. And we also have uh, Marine Corporal, uh, Marine Corps Lance Corporal Christer, Christopher O. Grant. Uh, died on October 20, serving during Operation en- Enduring Freedom. Uh, he was from Richwood, Louisiana, assigned to 1st Battalion, 9th Marine, 2nd Marine Division. He was stationed in Cap Lejeune, North Carolina, and again he died on October 20th while conducting combat operations in Helmand Province, Afghanistan. That's the price uh, for freedom last week guys uh, our hearts and uh, prayers and thoughts go out to uh, these guys and certainly uh, best wishes to uh, the wakelings and uh, Seth for a speedy recovery I'm Don McDowell we'll be right back Shake, Rattle, and Troll, a show for the serious fishermen, as well as the novice looking for tips from the pros. Shake, Rattle, and Troll is brought to you by Bill Luke Dodge Chrysler Jeep. Now, here's your host, saltwater fisherman and tournament pro, Don McDowell. Hey, I'm Don McDowell. Welcome to the second hour of Shake, Rattle, and Troll. Uh, doing a lot of stuff today, talking with uh, the tournament director for the... Uh, all-star bass fishing tournaments, and in personal opinion, is uh, John. I think you guys have uh, just an outstanding uh, number one tournament organization in in the state. Well, thank you, you know, very much. You guys much are doing, that, doing a damn good job. And you know, from an angling standpoint, I appreciate the uh, some of the stuff you guys are doing. You're taking really good care of the the anglers, taking good care of the fish, and uh, it's cool to have. Uh, 
you know, like you were talking about in the, the, the first hour, the camaraderie at the end of the day. Yeah, that is something that, uh, I don't, I don't want to make anything sound corny here, but that, that is the, the joy of doing the tournament. It when, is. When you stand where I stand and you look out and you see a hundred people just shooting the breeze, eating a hot dog, just having a good time. I mean, to me, that's what it's all about. Well, you know, you're right. And, and there's nothing worse in my mind. You, you know, you, bass fishing is expensive. You look at, uh, you know, an average tournament f- fisherman, he, he pulls up on the launch ramp. There's a hundred grand rolling in floor. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, and to pay the fees, uh, and go out and slug it out with, uh, you know, 150, 200 other guys and then leave. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like, what? Yeah, even if you don't do good, you need to stick around and have one of them $400 hot dogs. You do, dogs, because, you know, you know Gary Schieber had a song out uh, about bass fishing, a lot, a lot of fishing tunes. But, uh, you know, doing what we do, some days you win, most days you lose. Yep. And yep. At, at the end of the day, you know, you need to know know your competitors, man. They're just like you are. That, that's exactly right. I mean, and and like I said earlier in the first hour of the show, I mean, the 99.9%, probably 100% of our anglers are just great people. Absolutely. You know, we Absolutely. don't have the complaining, and the, it's just a, a good operation. Well, they it. share the passion and, and the love of the sport. Uh, you know, we bass fish for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, camaraderie is one of them. Uh, the competition factor, certainly, uh, you know, if you don't like the competition, you need to stay home. Get yeah. your lawnmower or your weed eater out. That's or right. go catfishing with uh, Patrick and uh, Tim Andrews from 96.3 Real Country. Tim, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. I understand you had a little bit of an adventure, uh, let, let's say out of the norm with, <laughs> yeah, with Flathead Ed and, uh, uh, Patrick over here. How'd that work out well, for you? That, I tell you what, as soon as I stepped off the dock and onto that boat and I saw a swivel rocker recliner in full camel, I thought, I'm in heaven, brother. Go ahead. Take me down. <laughs> See if this rings a bell. Imagine, if you will, a man on a journey, not only of mind, but of sight and sound. Going fishing with Flathead Ed, God love you, man. <laughs> you you, you got to get a T-shirt and a hat, man. I mean, you you know, we'd give you a Purple Heart, but, uh, you know, everything's fully functional. Uh, well, go ahead. And I got the T-shirt and the hat, and I think, uh, without a doubt, Patrick backed me up on this, I hooked the biggest tree of the night. Without a doubt. I'm glad nice. you said tree because we've been hearing about how the 50 and 60 pounders all got away. Well, he's the one that got me in the tree. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I did a darn good job of making sure he didn't get out of that tree. We ended up having to snap the line. But uh, Flathead Ed, what a character that guy is. Whether you're catching fish or you're just catching stories from him. And in, I mean, just I couldn't think of a better way to spend a Friday night. And my boy, Big Jake, has not and will not let me live down that he put the biggest fish on the boat that night. How big is it now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's got, up to, it's got up to about 25 pounds. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, we saw pictures of it here in the studio. Yeah, I've actually been sitting here working on Photoshop, trying to make my fish look so much bigger, <laughs> but it's not working out too well. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Any, yeah, any, really. any recommendations to anybody want to, that uh, wants to go catfishing with Flathead Head? Would you recommend it? Oh, I would recommend it in a heartbeat. I mean, if you want to have a great time with a great guy, just so gracious, and, and he has that Flathead Head fishing boat absolutely squared away to do one thing, and that's to go catch big fish. And he's a guy that knows how to do it. But, I mean, just a terrific time, and you'll love the stories, and uh, you will love the camouflage rocker recliner. I highly recommend it. I, I can't even track on that, Tim. And I've, I've got some things that, um, well, that uh, Pat McDowell does uh, when he's out on a boat in the middle of the night that would rock your world, but I, I'm not sure that it's radio friendly. We, so. need, to, we need to talk tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but thank you so much to Pat and you guys there at Fake Rattle and Troll for uh, putting this together. It was, uh, without a doubt, the best way to spend my 35th birthday uh, weekend, so thanks again. 35 times 2? 
Well, then you subtract a couple, a couple and then we get pretty close. Okay. <laughs> it's not the years, it's the mileage, my friend. That's right. Well, well listen, I want to extend an invitation to you. Uh, you do a good job over on uh, 96.3 Real Country. Uh, good stuff over there. But I'd like to have you and Flathead Ed and uh, Matt Catfish over here uh, come down and uh, spend some time with us. Hey, you know what? I'd love to do it. I've been enjoying the show this morning a whole lot, and I appreciate what you guys do as well, uh, just for conservation and making sure that we preserve hunting and fishing for our kids and our grandkids, because when it comes down to it, um, the best way to spend a weekend is outdoors with your kids, with family and friends, and there's nothing better than that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, I appreciate you uh, uh, saying that, uh We'll look forward to having you down here. And you can catch Tim on 96.3 Real Country. From 5 to 10, isn't it? 5 to 10? Yeah, if you, if you can put that together, it's from 5 to 10 every morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great weekend. Yeah, you, enjoy Tim. your day. Uh, Tim Andrews, uh, Real Country, doing a fine job over there uh, for those guys. Uh, bass fishing, beer, country music, you know, catfish, hot dogs. It's all got to tie in. It's all American. Yeah, it's figure. all American. Yeah. That's it's right. What, it's what, what we about, do. What about NASCAR? All righty. Um, tell me about your uh, your weigh-in uh, equipment. I, I found that pretty fascinating. Well, we, uh, like I told you the other day when we were talking, it was actually the brainchild of, of Rich Stringer a number of years ago. And uh, Jerry Kirkpatrick, built the tanks, put the pumps in them and everything. And I've always been very adamant about the preservation of our bass. It's like each one of them is my own kid. And we just want to have a release rate, you know, a live release rate that that just can't be questioned. And we do have that. I mean, Jerry is a master at taking care of fish once they hit the tank. We treat the water. We put the release me in the water. It's aerated. We chill it if need be. And the fish, in my opinion, are released back into the lake in better condition than they were when they were caught. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you guys do a good job. What uh, what type of uh, fizzing method uh, does he use? He uses the one down through the crunchers, you okay. know, and, and the reason being is because that's the way I taught him. And it's a lot easier to hold them under the water and watch the bubbles that comes out of the end of the needle so you don't over-fizz them. I mean, a lot of people don't realize you can let too much air out just oh, as yeah. easily. Yeah, they sink like a rock. Yeah, they do. They go right to the bottom. So. Game over. I've seen me do that very thing. Yeah, and he uh, he handles each one of them with kid gloves. And if he does lose a fish, you don't want to be around him. Ooh. He just, he gets angry. Yeah. You know, he's just yeah. not into losing fish. And, and he does a fantastic job. I've seen him in the dead of winter when they go down to, to dump the fish. I've seen one float up that needed to be fizzed. And I've seen him strip down naked in the middle of the winter <laughs> on Roosevelt and swim out and get that fish and take care of it and stay there till it swam off. Bless his heart. Yeah, really. Yikes. Yeah, yeah. So... You know, hats off to Jerry. Yeah, nothing worse than uh, trying to give a fish mouth to mouth and <laughs> yeah, naked. Exactly. And naked. And naked about that. in the middle of the winter, you know. Woo. Sorry, Jerry, if you're yeah, listening. Good stuff. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I hats off to you on that uh, conservation on our uh, large mouth. And, in fact, all of our stuff, like uh, Tim was talking about, you know, it's a big deal. And uh, It is a big there's deal. There's discussions uh, going to be had with all the tournament organizations relative to Fish handling uh, coming up this year, and uh, I'd like to see everybody get on the same page because there's there's a lot of mishandling of uh, fish, um, some pretty high mortality rates, and it, it, you know you guys taking it to the next level. There's things to do to keep the mortality rate down, especially uh, the post-release mortality. And uh, having said that, we're going to flip into a break, and I want to invite everybody over to uh, Fast Track Designs uh, October 29th from 10 a.m. to 2. Or customer appreciation day, and I guess what? I think they're having hot, hot dogs. dogs. Hot that's dogs. What, that's what he said Woo-hoo. the other day. They're having hot dogs. All righty. Uh, more information on that we, when we come back. And uh, John, thanks for coming down. It's just a real pleasure to have you here. We're going to flip in and uh, thank some of our sponsors right now. All 
All righty, we're back. Let me give you an address for uh, Fast Track Designs or Customer Appreciation Day. You can go over there, have a free lunch, and win a free vehicle wrap. And they're at 2518 West Morningside Drive, Phoenix, uh, pretty close to uh, I-17 uh, and Union Hills. All right, we're going to switch gears and uh, go to downtown San Diego. Uh, John Sneed's old stopping grounds with Brother Rick over at the H&M Landing Tax Shop. Ricky, what's happening? Uh, good morning. Yeah, the fish are still biting, but the passengers are going away. Well, you know, I'm not quite uh, tracking on that. I'm looking at the uh, Sea Adventure 80 out there just slugging them. Oh, yeah, they got 275 yellows, 100 bluefin, a uh, little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's good. I know the. Dyer Pacific came back with a hundred yellows and some bluefin on their day and a half. Wow! Everybody's still whacking fish, but they're just not going. It is getting colder though, you know, and the fish are starting to move a little farther south. Yeah, definitely. But uh, our local guys are having to return to rockfish more. But uh, I know the Premier's had some live squid the last few days, and they've gotten some really good quality. They got nineteen lings yesterday morning. Nice. And, uh, yeah, boy, that's good, that's good table fare right there. Oh, yeah, and a lot of fun. You know, they got plenty of reds and other rockfish, too, but those links are a nice little, little, little salt, you know, a little fun stuff, something a little bigger, get everybody excited when they're rock fishing. <laughs> yeah, boy. Well, that's uh, that's still good news, so it's still time, uh, you know, to get an offshore uh, salt trip under your belt before the, it, uh, it, things go away. There is before that tuna goes, but you better hurry because... Like I said, the passenger counts are dwindling to the point where it's hard to get people to go. Everybody's thinking about the holidays already. And no, kind of no, we're not. no, we're not. Well, we've got to get them out here. Thank no, you. this time of the year, we, no, the, Ricky, this time of the year, we think about deer season, elk season, exactly right. ham hunts, exactly. archery hunts, you know, rifle you know hunts. I, you know what I think about, too, is trout season. Nice. Because this is when they're planting the trouts and the big bass are coming up and eating them. That's right. <laughs> That's uh, what yeah. I'm thinking about. Yep. Yeah, I yeah, I really like to think game and fish for all the trout stockings in some of the bass lakes. It's like, oh, ooh, yeah. lunch. Over in San Diego, that's a big deal. I mean, all the years I lived in San Diego, I lived in Poway, and uh, we'd fish, you know, San Vicente and, and all that, and the fish in San Vicente would know when the trout truck showed up. Oh, yeah. I mean, I they would be there waiting. Yeah. They we, knew. we don't give them enough credit. Exactly. You know, you know, you know it was funny the other day. I was out at, at uh, Lake Jennings, and the uh, trout truck pulls up, and right under the dock there where they load, all of a sudden it's like a, a flotilla of big bass comes out from under the dock. That's right. That's right. And starts eating. I mean, they wouldn't eat any of the lures we were throwing at them. I think it's too much the real thing there, but... Man, they were popping those fish like it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they know when when that truck pulls up, it's the dinner bells ringing. Yeah, and there's some big boys there too. It was pretty cool. Yeah, there's some monsters in Jennings. Yeah, it was fun to watch. John, did you uh, partake of any uh, saltwater fishing? Absolutely. I yeah, used man. to go out of H and M all the time. We used nice. to used to do a lot of rock cod trips out of there, and you know, a lot of day and a halfers back in the day, and. Uh, I've got a couple friends over there that own boats. Uh, Mike Bingham is a good friend of mine that lives up there in Poway, and I started going out with him. And, you know, we got away from the the H&M type fishing and got into a little bit more, you know, four or five guys on a boat type yep, fishing. Yep, six-packs. Six packs, yeah. stuff yep. like that, yeah, yeah. They're a lot of fun. Yeah. I know uh, Clay Williams, he runs the uh, Penetrator. He just called in. He's got six people on there. He's already got uh, uh, four blue fin, four yellow fin. Up to about forty pounds, and wow, uh, nice, and about uh, thirty yellowtail already. Nice, so, not not a bad little trip for him so far. How were the albacore this year? There weren't any, really. Yeah, the closest uh, fish I heard there was a few fish up in uh, Morro Bay, but most of them were o- Oregon and Washington still. Wow, Morro Bay's a bad place. That's some. It can be pretty man. Good. Yep, we had a. Had a little ballad in Morro Bay on the uh, Blue Horizon that didn't fare well for her, for a couple of guys. Man, it was yeah. tough stuff up there. It can be it can be pretty bump, bumpy up there. Anywhere with the, north of Point Conception can get really rough. Yeah, yeah. Well, any uh, last commenting shots to, uh, to anybody who wants to come over and fish? Guys, if you have a chance, fishing is as good as you can want it to be on the day and a half and longer trips. Um, 
Of course, the long-range guys are starting to get the wahoo and a lot of the big tuna. Yeah. I know the red rooster's coming in next Sunday, and they're already sending me lots of pictures of 200-pound fish. So Nice. <laughs> fishing can still be had and probably the fishing of your life. So give us a call at 619-222-1144 in San Diego, and we'd love to get you out there. Or you can book online at hmlanding.com. Hey, man, have a, a blessed rest of the day, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. All right, Don. Sounds good. Thank you very much. All right, Rick over at the uh, HM Landing Tackle Shop. Have you seen what they did to the to the whole wharf over there? No, I have not been over they there. Tore since they tore everything all that. down and yeah. rebuilt. I'm telling you, you know, it's just uh, uh, it's it's nice. Yeah, yeah. Just I've heard that it's nice. really nice. And one of the best things uh, going over there is the uh, Point Loma Seafood Store. Yes, sir. Mm. Another uh, another friend of mine's heavily involved with that, John Cassidy. I, I'm pretty sure you know John from yes. uh, Fish Talk Radio over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's heavily involved with all that. That's good stuff. Yeah, I've met some really interesting characters over there. Uh, Cassidy and uh, Ed Zerlowski, uh, yeah. he's senior writer for the San Diego yep. Tribune. In fact, uh, I don't remember what boat we were on. I think it was on the first string. Uh, Ed was out there, and he said, uh, are you fishing the slide? I go, what? He said, the slide. So what kind of blur is that? <laughs> <laughs> he said, come here. And uh, that started a whole new deal. I, You know, I can probably th- remember throwing a live anchovy maybe two times since I met Ed. Uh-huh. But fishing the slide, man, I'll tell you what. In my world, that's number one. <laughs> Bam. Here we go. Yeah, Ed's a good guy, and he's a heck of a writer, too. I mean, He, he does a good job, and... Uh, I, he, you know, like you say, he's a heck of a writer, but he's a hell of a uh, tuna fisherman. Yes, he is. I mean, he's, yes, he he's is. up on it right there, and you got to fight for him to get that uh, uh, spot over in the corner. Yeah, that corner. That, yep, <laughs> yeah, that's right it, the, the corner. corner yep. Yeah. yeah, they call rotate, and everybody moves but Ed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tuna <laughs> shuffle, he doesn't do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got to go around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've had that. Uh, yeah, but these guys uh, are out on the Sea Adventure 80, uh, they've got 22 anglers, uh, like Rick was talking about, 100 blue fins, 225 yellowtail. Man. That's awesome. That's good fishing. <laughs> you know, it doesn't uh, get much better than that. Uh, we've seen as, as high as, I think, 7.38 fish per stick uh, earlier in the season. And uh, the albacore this year, for some reason, yeah, and we've seen them do this uh in consecutive years, they'll come stick their nose in uh, right about the 120, 125 mile mark, and then vanish. Yeah, just and, go away. Yeah, yeah, you know they pop up, and uh, this year they showed up in Oregon uh, in uh, mid June, early July, which is a mistake. And you know, looking at the uh, the biology of these guys, uh, they're you know the science guys really don't know a lot about the albacore. They're, they're, uh, yeah, you're right. They're a strange deal. Yeah. They, they just yeah. vanish and then, and then they make a fatal mistake and show up in, in Japan. Yeah. 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 yeah get, show get, up in Japan and never leave yeah, Japan. Yeah. Yep. Charlie the tuna, huh? <laughs> you're, you're going to dinner, buddy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's, that's pretty interesting stuff. Um, getting back on, uh, all-star, uh, team tournaments and, um, the best bet. Um, how many aluminum boats have you got fishing? On average, 10, 12? Uh, no, maybe? not even. Really? No, four, five, six. I am going to call Bill Ruley because Bill sold his, uh, his B line and uh, bought himself a, a 14 foot aluminum boat. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, come on out. Yeah, he's, he's feeling the pain not having a bass boat, but Bill, Bill, call me. Yeah, Bill, call him. <laughs> yeah, boy. I don't know how big the motor is, but, uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's about the size of the uh, lawnmower that I don't use anymore. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, he's got a three-quarter ton uh, ram. Got the rack going on with uh, uh, really air conditioning. And, uh, yeah, he debuted this boat last year at uh, Bill Look Bass Days. And I tell you what, I about had a heart attack laughing. because He's got this big monster truck pulling this little 14-foot boat. <laughs> I think it's 14 feet. It may be 12. I'm not sure. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny. My very first boat back in the day, bass boat, was a 16-foot low aluminum boat. Nice. With a 35-horse mercury on it. And I caught more fish and won more money yeah. out of that boat than yeah. all the boats since. 
Yeah. You know. Yeah, guys don't get it. You know, we Bill and I were talking about that, and uh, you know, back in the day, I bought a, a boat when uh, Lake Mary, the Lower Lake, went dry and mm-hmm. the store closed. So I bought a, a boat. I think it was twelve bucks. Yeah. And uh, Granddad gave me a uh, eighteen horse seven rood, and uh, that was way, way, way too much motor for that little bitty boat. Let's, <laughs> let's just say. A popsicle stick with a motor. Yeah. yeah. Hey, when we come back, uh, we're going to be talking to James Guggenauer, our master rod builder from Run Country Custom Rods, and uh, talk about the giveaways and uh, drawing that's going on up there, and maybe even some of the wolf stuff. Uh, I'm Don McDowell with John Sneed. Hey, we'll be right back. We apparently have a new theme song for James Guggenauer. Nice. Hey, what's happening, Brother James? Hey, good morning, Don. How you doing? You know, life's pretty good right now. Um, John Sneed's here from All Star, talking about his uh, organization, and um, they're doing a good job. Did yeah, you, you know, what, before we get uh, started on your fishing report, did you get the notification uh, of the uh, Wolf meeting in Pine Top? I did. Okay. And if we communicated that yesterday on the uh, on the show. And yes, uh, could it be a pine top at the uh, Hyundai Hotel and Casino? And they have a conference room up there on December third. And maybe you can help me understand this better. They said that there is a public information meeting from three thirty to five p.m. and then the public hearing starts at six to eight thirty p.m. And I, I'm assuming that that means the official part of the meeting is from 6 to 8.30. Uh, I believe you're right. I think they're going to, um, and, and forgive me, I don't want to sound like I'm picking on them unnecessarily, but I think the uh, 3.30 meetings, uh, they're a smoke screen. Fertilizer. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay. That, yeah, that was Mac BS over here. And then uh, the other, the other that uh, letter that came out was that they are extending, again, the public uh, comment period until December 17th. Right. So we encourage everyone to uh, go to the websites and uh, give inputs. The website is www.regulations.gov, and you can give your input on uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife planning to release wolves into rim country. Well, at, at the same time, the comments need to be uh, rational and not emotional. I mean, just don't, don't go in and go, I don't want wolves, or we need to shoot wolves, or, you know, whatever it is. You know, g- give your opinion and uh, use some logic in doing so, because they will throw those out the door. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Any, any uh, comment? Uh, have you heard any comments on why they didn't want to come to downtown Payson? No, you know, is. As you know, uh, Mayor Evans and Cameron Davis up here have written uh, several emails to the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife offering uh, a meeting place right here in Payson since it's so centrally located in the state. Um, other than there are some commissioners with the Game and Fish that live over in Pine Top, I can't think of a good reason why they would go there. But uh, it is what it is. You know, people just have to drive a little further to get there. And maybe maybe that's all part of the grand plan too. We just don't know. Well, they like they like to throw uh, curveballs in there, but you know, g- going to Pine Top, uh, they've got to uh, deal with the uh, the folks that live up in the Springerville area. Uh, Wink Krigler and uh, some of the other ranchers, uh, I'm sure, are going to be there. And you know, if you missed any of the Jim uh, uh, beers issues, we've got that up. Uh, in fact, we've got the whole interview up on uh, the Shake Rattle and Troll dot com website. You can go to the Wolf Files and see the video of wolves in government clothing, which is uh, pretty interesting. Which kind of depicts some of the things you were talking about, having to put cages around the uh, bus stop so the kids don't get eaten while they're waiting on uh, on the bus to go to school. So it's, it's pretty uh, pretty moving. So. Yeah, yeah, I have to say. Well, yeah. you guys have done a good job up there with uh, Mayor Kenny. Now, are, is Mayor or uh, Davis going to be uh, in attendance at uh, Pine Top? I uh, haven't talked to either specifically, but I I would expect it as a minimum. Uh, Cameron will be there. He's been at all the other meetings, and um, it would sure be great if Mayor Evans can fit it into his schedule. 
All righty, enough about the wolves. Uh, how's fishing over at the Mother Lake? Yeah, uh, one other announcement about Roosevelt Lake before we get into the report is that the Arizona Game and Fish is going to be conducting their fish survey. This will be one of their shocking surveys, October 28th through the 30th. So next week uh, they're going to they're going to be there, and uh, they're going to try to determine the impact and the solution for the gizzard shad that we've been talking about. Right, Roosevelt Lake. So uh, just a heads up for everybody, um, after they get the results back, and according to the people at Game and Fish, it's going to take a couple of weeks to get the data together, but we're planning on a meeting in Tonto Basin at the end of November where Game and Fish will come up for the third roundtable meeting to communicate results of that study and then a go-forward plan with uh, Gizzard Chad and Rosebell Lake. Will there be hot dogs involved? <laughs> okay. hey. You, you got John Sneed sitting across the table from you. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> hey, you know, and I, I always tease John about this because he does such a great job in his tournament. But I said, every time he asks John something, he turns over and looks at Jan to see if it's okay to <laughs> say yes or no. <laughs> She's sitting here in the room with me, and every time Don asks me a question, I look at her and she holds up a notepad and with <laughs> scribbled on it what I need to say. Yeah, it was interesting. I invited him over, and he says, I'm going to have to get a hall pass. <laughs> he brought the principal. Yeah. What were what were the dates on the shock again, Jim? Uh, the twenty eighth through the thirtieth. Okay. And uh, your contact, John, is um, Kurt Gill. You know Kurt Gill. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's coordinating the effort up there. Okay, cool. Bass fishing on Roosevelt Lake was called good this past week by experienced anglers. Now, with the temperatures dropping and the water temperature going down. The fall pattern is well underway. Our experienced anglers will tell you to fish the fall just like you fish the spring. And so the reports that I've been receiving is that those those types of techniques are working good. Spinner baits, crank baits, Texas rig and drop shot techniques were all producing good numbers last week on Roosevelt. Crappie fishing also was called good. And, you know, this is about a month now that we've been hearing increased numbers on uh, on crappie bites. Still fishing vertically. For whatever reason, guys are not reporting success on a trolling method. Guys are finding brush with suspended crappie in them in 25 to 35 feet of water, and that's where they're, they're mainly catching them. And the hot spot that was given this past week is down by the dam, it would be on the, the tunnel side of the dam um, along the road there. If you go along and look for brush in 25 to 30 feet of water, uh, that's where you'll be finding them. A two-inch curly tail grub in a multitude of colors. You know, we always talk about John Deere, which is a green and yellow and a black, blue, and chartreuse color. But I heard lots of other silver metallic and black metallics. But the, the trick is a... Two inch curly tail grub on about a uh, one eighth or one sixteenth ounce cheek head hook. And uh, good numbers for crappie. Kurt Rambo, uh, you know, it's been years since I've heard him excited about crappie fishing, but he put it this past week. I heard that uh, Kurt and Norm Meyer went out and roped him the other day. Yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, I heard that they had, I don't know, 22 or 25 or something, and they were all decent ones. Mm hmm. So yeah. that's awesome. I'm glad to hear the crappie bites coming back. Yeah, because we, you know, that's one of the things that we've been noticing as an impact with the, the gizzards have now. You know, this is the most stable time of year, and for, you know, both schooling bass and schooling crappie, you know, they like the October, November time frame when the weather's more consistent up there. Yes, yes. It's uh, a good time to be on the water uh, for, for anywhere around uh, Roosevelt Lake. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. The other thing in rim country is our uh, uh, trout up on the rim still getting really good reports of guys going up there. And the, and the best thing is they said you can have some of those lakes to yourself up there. There are no crowds. There's still some good trout fishing, and guys are catching good number. Dennis uh, Perch is, went up uh, last weekend, and he said it's just magnificent up there, beautiful, and have the whole lake to yourself. Nice. And the urban trout stocking has started here in Payson. They don't start down in the valley until mid, mid-November, putting the, the trout into the lakes down there, but we're already underway here in Payson. 
And, uh, you know, it's just a, a great time. If people from the valley are up here and you're spending the night in Payson, uh, run out to Green Valley Lake there and throw some power bait on, and I can almost guarantee you, you'll catch a limited trout right there. Excellent. Great report. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's why uh, Cameron spends these, uh, his breaks. You know, his <laughs> office is right there. Yeah. 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 That's good stuff. Yep, that's for sure. All right. And, what else? Uh, that's all we have for the report. We just want to give one final reminder that uh, this is the last week that you can purchase tickets for the uh, Ultimate Sportsman's Drawing. Um, they're giving away high-powered rifles, uh, like $1,000 bows uh, that guys can archery hunt with. And um, only 400 tickets are being sold. I think they still have a few tickets left. I'm going to give a phone number here that uh, anyone interested can call. 928-978-5073. And you can go to a website that is the Ultimate Sportsman's Giveaway and check out those prizes. But definitely give a call and, and pick up a ticket here man, this coming week. Good stuff. I appreciate uh, the heads up on that. I don't have my ticket yet, but uh, I'll, I'll take care of that. There's too many uh, good things to miss out on. Yeah. Yeah, that that is a, a pretty cool deal. Well, what they're doing, if you know, if they draw your name... And let's say you win a rifle, they put your name back in the hat. Really? Yeah. Wow, I'm so unlucky that I barely win once, let alone twice. Yeah. Well, yeah, boy. Last, last year, that actually happened. A guy here in Payson won two rifles, one valued like at $850 and the other one like at $1,100. Wow. So he said both his sons got some great Christmas presents. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right, good stuff, James. Uh, appreciate the updates, and uh, we'll talk to you next week on the uh, Wolf Updates. I'll see you on the water, John. All okay, right. Jim, thanks, bud. Hey, Jim Allen from AZBW's in the house. Hi, Don. Must be paper delivery time. Oh, you guys sound like you're having so much fun down here, I just couldn't pass it up. Anybody you want to pick on today? <laughs> no, not me. I'm going to yeah, save that right. for John. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> I'd have no reason to stay. Nice. How true is that? Yeah. My bait has a first name. It's O S C A R. <laughs> uh, okay. 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 We're, we're, we're getting sideways here. James, what's in the uh, AZBW this week, this month, well, this we time? Well, we got all kinds of good stuff. But what I wanted to show you, I don't know if you've ever seen this. We've been doing this one, that version, for a long time. Now, here's the regular version. but And I'll tell you, that's a, a glossy uh, copy that we do, and it's been available nice. forever. I don't believe I've ever had, had a copy. No, and I don't think I've ever showed it to you. I got to thinking about it this morning when I was headed out the door. But we started that. Uh, there's a... Uh, Young man in San Diego that fishes uh, IGFA, and I know he's he's been part of our thing for oh uh, four or five years, and he's just real young, but he keeps winning all these tournaments, and the, his dad is just his best sponsor in the whole world. Uh, you know, yeah, he's well, always always uh, sending his yeah. pictures and things, and he always wanted copies, and I got to thinking that. For special occasions like that, it'd be nice to have a, a glossy copy. So we started making those, but we've been Auto, doing that. For, yes. We've been making those for three or four years. So I've never they're seen kind this. of fun. No, I didn't think you had. Where, where are they available? Well, uh, they're available online. But uh, anybody that's ever interested, just email me at jim at azbw dot com, and I'll get you the the information on it. Uh, it's just kind of a fun fun edition. It's exact, pretty much exactly the same thing as the regular issue that we have. Uh, the difference is that that one's not free, but uh, the regular ones are still free sure. for the subscription. But anyway, that's what we're doing. So, All right. Good stuff. I Good love stuff. your new truck, by the way. Thank you. That's uh, <clears throat> You are going to make work on making that a little louder, though? Uh, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, you can actually drive down the... Don, if, if Don's neighbors are listening, it's going to get louder. <laughs> I, I've been tempted to pull the muffler. 
<laughs> I mean, there's nothing to, nothing like the sound Put of some an cutouts eight, on eight that thing. liter turbocharged diesel. <laughs> Cummins. I love it. That, that is, is a good looking cool. truck. Yeah. Yeah, we've got uh, second, uh, will be the second uh, display in the VA parade. It's got its job cut out. It hasn't been to an event yet, but we have uh, SRP uh, has an internal veterans appreciation organization. They're doing a, uh, a benefit luncheon, thanking them for their service. They do an outstanding job hiring veterans. Uh, we have that on the 6th. We have uh, a school that we go to annually. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to get this one. I had a little bit of a trouble getting the dues and half in there. I don't know how in the world I'm going to get a five-ton in where they want to stage it, but... Uh, uh, we do, we do that. We've got a, uh, VFW post we're going to, uh, you know, there's like, I think five different events over a Which four, VFW uh, post are you going to? It's, um, uh, 7th Avenue in Van Buren. It's post number one. Oh, okay. And we have the AMVCC uh, meetings down there and, uh, um, a lot of interesting, uh, veterans down there. Yeah. Uh, actually, Carol and I spent quite a bit of time at the, uh, one in Scottsdale and, uh, very interesting stories uh, yeah this year we're uh pretty blessed we have uh, uh a military ammunition wagon literally it's a wagon uh drop sides on it uh we're going to have that filled full of uh world war ii veterans that are up there in age nice i, I don't know if uh mr colazar is going to join us uh world war ii are you saying he's up in age Mr. Colazar <laughs> is 91. He's no fun to pick on when he's uh, not here. <laughs> no, that's junior. Senior's 91 years old, uh, still yeah. carrying some shrapnel uh, from the Battle of the Bulge, fought yeah. on the ground. Wow. Is that uh, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lost some fingers and toes due to frostbite. And uh, I love that guy. He said, did I ever tell you about the Battle of the Bulge? No. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear that story? Said, yeah, absolutely. Said, absolutely. He said, would you mind if I had a half a glass of beer? I said, Mr. Colazar, I will get you an entire pitcher. He goes, no, mom always knows if I have more than a half. half. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. So, I don't care who you are, where you go, what, you, what you've been through, you have to have a hall pass. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Always good stuff. But, yeah, and then uh, Charlie Lewis from uh, Desert Warriors uh, is going to have uh, – I don't know how many, but a few of the uh, Tuskegee War, uh, Airmen, which is going to be pretty interesting, hmm. from the Red Tails. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a movie out, uh, Red Tails, about the uh, those guys, uh, black aviators, and uh, really went over there and, and, uh, and kicked some butt. You know, it's amazing when you talk to these these older guys that have some of the things that, and you got to dig it out of them. They're not going to generally just sit except, back and tell you all these Mr. things. Mr. are. He'll tell you about it. Well, if he has a half a glass half of beer. Half a glass of beer, that's right. <laughs> Want to feel my shrapnel? Go, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Good stuff. And, th and then we'll be uh, blessed with uh, some of the wolf pack from uh, Arizona National Guard. Uh, that'll be, uh, I think the head wrangler there will be uh, Master Sergeant uh, Christopher Dempsey in his uh, band of bad boys over there. So that's all good stuff. Uh, we've got a few minutes to clean this up. Uh, John, how do we get in touch with you? How do we sign up and fish uh, all-star teams? Um, we, Jim, could I, could I get you to wear a nightgown so we could fish a couples uh, tournament? You got the legs for it. Dude, I'm telling you. You never know what you're going to wander into <laughs> down here, do you? I'm, I'm, I'm Patrick, just, you're just sitting over there grinning. I'm just asking. I'm, I'm trying to get uh, Bill Rooley to be... Uh, no be, wonder you gave me this chair. <laughs> the the absolute best way is... I refuse to wear the high heels, though. So <laughs> okay, that's no it. We'll that's, some, it's hard with high heels on a boat. Yeah, it's would be tough. So yeah. I hear. And you, yeah, you know I, that because yeah, I'll come? That's, that's what I heard. Somebody told me. Imagine John Steed and Spikes. <laughs> Ooh, boy. I've, I've fallen and I can't get up. Yeah, fishnet stockings. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, yeah the, the best way to get a hold of us is uh, www.allstarbass.org. Or, All of our phone numbers and everything, email and everything is right there. That's good stuff. Yeah, that that is the best way. Um, you know, go to our website, check us out, give me a call. One thing we haven't talked about, fishing all-star uh, team circuit uh, this year. How do you qualify for the Bassmaster Classic? Yeah, that's pretty awesome, huh? You know what? I've said that for last. That is just good stuff right there. Um, the way that it's going to work is we are able to send one team basically per 50 average boats that we have. So we'll be able to send the Anglers of the Year, 
most likely the runners up. And if everything goes right and we have an awesome year, we'll be able to send three teams. And what they'll do is they'll go. We don't know where they're going yet, but they'll go someplace like Dardanelle or someplace like that. Nice. And uh, they will have the team championship. Now, what they will do, this will be from, you know, all the other. We're not the only one that has this to offer. There's At this point in time, there's 12 other organizations Man. in the United States. So what they will do is they will go to this tournament, then they will take the top three teams from that tournament and put those six individuals in their own boat all in the same weekend, and the winner out of those six individuals has a berth into the Classic. Sweet. How awesome is that? Through, yeah. through fishing teams. Man. So that, that's what it's all about. We'll have more details on that. Um, we're waiting for our, our package. You know, we became a charter member of this deal. <clears throat> and we're waiting for our package. We should have it here in the next 10 days or so, and we'll have all the information on our website. Nice. Get it to me. We'll get it up on the uh, shakerattleandtroll.com website. Uh, check it out. We've got our new store open for uh, shirts and hats. Some of them are politi- politically correct. Most of them aren't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we've got a new one, new one coming out. Uh, shoot, move, and adjust fire. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> And how do you get your uh, newspaper, James? Uh, AZBW.com, WesternOutdoorTimes.com. We've got it all over now. Uh, we've got one of the neat things down with this new website is um, uh, we update stories on a, almost a daily basis. So whatever comes out in the oh, cool. in the print version is added to frequently. Have you engaged on all the wolf issues? No, but you know what? Uh, you guys really got me started on that, and I have been doing some reading, and uh, you and you and J.K. have some really good information coming out on this. We're trying and it's, like you mentioned earlier, stay off the emotional part of it and get down to the practical side of it, and, and then there's some, something to work with there. Well, that you know, the emotional part, uh, the, it's a highly emotional, and there's only two sides of this. You were either four wolves. Or you're against wolves. There's no in between. Yeah, there's course. no gray area there. No, you know yeah. the average uh, person doesn't really have a have a clue. You know, oh yeah, wolves are cool. Well, yeah, but they eat every other damn thing out in the woods. So, uh, you know, and then the expense thirty plus million dollars. Uh, Jim Beers, the interview on that. Uh, you can check it, check that out on the on the website. Uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service, you know, misappropriated uh, somewhere between seventy-five and a hundred million dollars of the Pittman Robbins Fund. That, that that's our money. But anyway, check that out. Hey, uh, John, thank you so much for coming down. Thanks and, for uh, having me, Don. I appreciate it. Jim, I, I uh, appreciate you bringing me down paper to deliver next week. Well, it's time for you to deliver. And by the way, I just have to ask this: you keep going up in size on trucks. Is the next one an eighteen-wheeler? Uh, this is bigger than an eighteen-wheeler. You can look. Down in the cab of an 18 wheel driving this five ton. Ooh, raw. <laughs> so, no, no, answer is no. I've exceeded my parking uh, space size by I about see. a foot and a half. Let's ask Jan if he's getting a bigger one. Is yeah, ten, bigger ten one? foot two to the top of the cab. <laughs> All right, hey, uh, thanks for listening today. Uh, hope you learned something. I'm Don McDowell. I'm John Sneed. And Jim Allen. Take your kids fishing. Hug your bass boat, salute a soldier. It's not free, guys. We'll be back next week.